Well, that's not good. So, currently I am driving to the mechanic because last night when I was driving down the coast at like 5.30 my check engine light came on. So I pulled over into a random neighborhood and kind of just set up shop for the night and started calling a bunch of mechanics. I called like 10 or 15 mechanics trying to get someone who could see me today. None of them could see me until I finally called this one who said that they had an appointment availability at 11.30 a.m. this morning. So we're heading there to get it checked out. I did plug in my uh, little computer and the code that it gave me says that it's the O2 sensor in Bank 2 Sensor 2 which I think is after the catalytic converter, so I don't think it's too big of an issue to be driving on it. I also was able to pull from the vast knowledge of my many followers and subscribers to ask them if they thought it was okay to drive on, if it was safe, and the general consensus was that it was safe to drive on, so anyone who commented on the uh, picture on my Instagram or on my YouTube, appreciate you, thank you for the advice, but I'm just gonna get it checked out regardless. Maybe get the uh, sensor replaced if it needs to, or do whatever they need to do. But I guess we'll see what they say when we get there. All right, and we have made it to the only mechanic that had any availability for today to get my van checked out. So my fridge also came flying open on the drive over here, so I have a bunch of random fridge items on my floor that I have to clean up before I bring it in there. I couldn't bother myself to pull over and clean it up on the way here, so we're just gonna clean it up now. How's it going? Good. I called earlier about yeah, the- Yeah, uh, the one with the O2 sensor issue. Yeah, yeah. Is it one by ten? Yeah, yeah. So it's a sensor two, bank two? Yeah, and um, I just turned the car on and the check engine light is off now, so it might just be one of those one-off issues, but I do still Possibly. Yeah, I want to get it checked out. And then Good. and then also, if you guys can uh, do an oil change while it's up there, too, that'd can be I great, too. I don't do any oil changes today because I'm so loaded with oil. Okay. Have them, have hey, are you, like, starting your video from the morning, like, like yeah. continuously? Yeah, yeah. I think I have your channel. You probably do, then, yeah. Yeah, let's go inside. I want to double-check it. Yeah, it's uh, Ryan Toomey, right. so I live out of it full-time. Yeah. Built I it. do, because I know the roof. <laughs> yeah. I was just watching one of the episodes where you were like, uh, if I use uh, too much lights or whatever, it's like super bright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you play video games. Yep, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Three hours later, I'm on the way. And I'm camping. So, so you have some experience doing van life stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then after that, I sold the Nissan Quest. For 150 bucks, you get like a 5G... They guarantee like a hundred and... Oh, is that the, uh, the Verizon Home? Like yeah. Everywhere. I also just got Starlink, so that's coming in soon, too. Oh, you got the Starlink. Yeah, so that'll be fun. Uh, Follow a lot of camping accounts. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell I'm bored. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Yeah, so you are subscribed. I am subscribed. So how, how do you even see it? Definitely enjoy your day, and then um, well, we'll see you around. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. You'll see yourself in my next video. Huh, okay. All right, so right when I pulled up into the uh, auto body shop, the check engine light actually turned off. So I think it might have just been a uh, one-off kind of thing where the sensor malfunctioned for one cycle and that kind of fixed itself because I know with those uh, O2 sensors that can happen, but that guy was super helpful. He got into the van, checked it out, said everything was good. Um, and he said, if I have any issues, I can just give him a call and he'll, uh, he'll order the part and then replace it for me. So if you're ever in the Monterey area of California, definitely check out CNA Automotive. Very good guy. But now that we don't have to get anything repaired, we can head out of here and I think I might go get myself an oil change and then try to find somewhere that's nearby in the area to stealth camp because I wanna hit this spot down on the uh, Monterey Pier that has the best clam chowder that I've ever had in my life. Last time I was here, I got it and I've been thinking about it ever since. So I think we're gonna stay in the uh, Monterey area for the night. But first, it is time for an oil change. Uh, just oil change? We're only doing tune-ups today. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead and have Jiffy Loop guy's got jokes. I pulled up and he says, Oh, sorry, we're only doing tune-ups today. Thank you. And if you could sign this for me right here. Yep. There we go. Oil change complete. So while I was in there getting my oil changed, I was looking up places around uh, where I'm currently at that I could stealth camp, and I found a place that's right down by the pier by the beach that I'm going to try out. So we're only about six minutes away. 
All right, so I found this spot that's up here right next to this kind of park just in this residential area. And typically when I do stealth camping like this in small towns, I like to park when I can next to something that's not someone's house. So I think I'm just gonna drive along this park and see if I can find a uh, open spot to stay for the night. All right, so I think I'll find a spot right there. I'm just gonna back into real quick. So I don't know if this is the exact spot that we're gonna stay for the night because it's kind of uh, close to the main road. I might want something that's down back that way on that it's more of a side street down there. This is just kind of close to a lot of intersections and foot traffic and I like to kind of be tucked away when I'm stealth camping. But for now, this is good enough. Maybe we can find something later today when a lot of people have left because this place is pretty packed and there's a bunch of cars here. So I think I'm probably just going to head down to that pier because we're not really far from it. We're like two or three blocks from this pier down on the water that, uh, that has a bunch of restaurants and shops in it where I actually got my first bowl of clam chowder ever. And ever since then, I have been obsessed with it. And I think I just got lucky because this place has the best clam chowder that I've had and I've had a lot since. But yeah, the camping spot is just kind of right next to this big park on the side of the road. So it's not much, but here is like right down here. Also, I do want to say since I have such a big platform and I do do this by choice and there are a lot of people who follow me who either want to do van life or are planning to do van life or something like that. And since there are so many people that live in their vehicles or live this kind of lifestyle, not by choice, but by necessity. And a lot of the easily accessible stealth camping spots in the cities where those people might stay are kind of getting shut down and it's getting a little bit harder to find places to camp like this overnight because people come in overstay the welcome, leave trash behind, or just aren't as respectful as they can be. And then neighbors call and these places kind of get shut down and it's gonna kind of ruin it for everybody if stuff like this isn't done in a uh, respectful type of way. So if you've been thinking about living in a van or in your vehicle and you wanna do some stealth camping like this, just always try to be respectful of the neighborhood that you're in and the place that you're staying and don't leave a mess. Also, another benefit of this stealth camping spot is I think at that public park, there's public bathrooms and just like a five minute walk down here at that building, there's also some public bathrooms. So I have the option to go somewhere if I need to. And sometimes there's actually seals that hang out right out here too. So maybe we'll see those. And the last time I was here, there was this little mouse that was running around or might've been a chipmunk. I'll see if I can find the video and overlay it. But it was running around just terrorizing people on the pier. All right, so it doesn't look like there's any seals down there today, but maybe there'll be some when we leave. Last time I was here, it was on a weekend, and this place was packed. There's still a good amount of people up there, but it's nowhere near as packed as the last time I was here. All right, so this is the spot right here. I remember it. Um, can I just get the uh, clam chowder and the bread bowl? Can I try to eat it? Yes, please. Look at that. Delicious. I think I'm gonna take this to the end of the pier and eat it up there. I'm so excited. It's been so long since I've had this. Cheers. Oh, so good. And it looks like there is a beach over there. I don't know if you can see it right between these bars, but it looks like there might be a few seals up on the beach on that side. So maybe we'll head over there after uh, I finish this glorious bowl of clam chowder. Seals are going crazy. Do I have anything on my face? I just went to, <clears throat> I just went to town eating that bowl. I don't think I can eat anymore, but I just about devoured half of it. That was so good. So I had to stop by the uh, little candy store on the end of the pier to get these, which are my favorite, I forget what they're called. They're like little mint sugar candies, and then some Pez, but Pez are a little bit easier to find. These are impossible to find, so whenever I find them, I always grab a bag. They're so good. There you go, there's a seal right there. There's a little baby lounging on the rock, and then there's that guy swimming over there with his tail out of the water. Just kinda hanging out.
All right, so we're getting back to the van now after spending the day kind of hanging out down by the pier here in Monterey and checking out the town. And I just said earlier that I was gonna move my spot, but there's one, two more vans down there. So got a little bit of a community going here. So I think that I might just end up staying here in the spot that I'm currently at for the night. Because if I was to move, it would only be like a block down that way into the right. So it just doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna stay here for the night. So typically when I'm out of the van for a day, especially when it's hot, I'll keep the fan running to keep the air circulating back here. So that way, when I come to get back into the van, it's not like crazy hot. So it's actually pretty comfortable in here. It's 71 according to my little uh, reader thing right here. So definitely not bad and it's only gonna get cooler tonight. So I probably won't even sleep with the fans on. The sun is just starting to set outside. It is slowly becoming nighttime and sun setting in the summer means later and later times. So it's just about 7.30 right now. So I'm gonna make myself some dinner. And I don't think I'm really gonna do too in depth of uh, cooking anything since I have, if you watched my last video, I have a ton of burrito meat and rice and stuff left over. So I'm just gonna do a little rice bowl. So I think one of the uh, most important things if you're planning on living on the road, if you've got friends and family and stuff back home is to find yourself a way that you can still connect and communicate with them and stay in touch or else you might end up losing touch with some of the people that you really care about. So I have a couple ways that I've chosen to stay in touch and hang out with my friends back home while I'm living full time on the road. And one of those ways is just FaceTime and texting and staying in touch with them. And then the other one specifically for my Guy friends that are back home, I have my Xbox whenever I can, especially when I'm stealthing up at spots like this where once it's nighttime, there's really not that much to do. I'll just hop on here, play some Xbox and hang out with them while I can. So I think before I go to bed tonight, I'm gonna hop on with my friends and play some Xbox. Yo, you ready to play? Oh, I cracked him. Oh, he's one shot. Nice. Nice. All right, so played Xbox for a couple hours, maybe two with some of my friends back home. And uh, it is dark out now, the sun has set. And our direct van life neighbor, I don't know if you guys can see, the one that was parked kind of right where this spot is directly next to us has left, but there's a few other vans and truck campers up right, up to the right up there. So still feel pretty safe, but it is 9.30. I'm probably just going to get to bed, so. I will check in with you guys in the morning. Good morning. So I have had the hot water heater running for like 15 minutes right now. So I should have just about five gallons of hot water to wash my face with. And typically when I can't get full showers in the morning, I do like to wash my face because it makes me feel like a little bit cleaner. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's better than nothing. So when I was walking around the uh, town yesterday, I noticed this coffee shop that was down the road like two blocks. So I think after I trim up my face and make myself look a little bit nicer, I'm gonna head down there and grab some coffee. So the only thing that's on my face that is somewhat respectable in terms of facial hair is my mustache. My beard doesn't grow in fully, it took me like two years to grow this in to be halfway decent. So it's the only thing I leave behind typically, but right around the corner up here, you can see it, is that uh, coffee shop. Can I just get a uh, medium Americano? And then do you guys have like a breakfast sandwich or no? Do we have any croissant sandwiches? Yeah, we have one left. Yeah, perfect, I'll get one of those then too. First coffee shop I've had that uh, gave me my coffee in a mug. Nice. But I think that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Once I uh, once I finish my coffee and eat my sandwich, I'm probably going to head out of the area. But 
As always, I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help out. And I'll catch you guys next time.